Welcome to your new favorite band, the podcast brought to you by the LA Navy. And now, your hosts, Dallas Dwight and Drizzle Silvera. Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of your new favorite band, the podcast brought to you by us, the LA Maybe. I'm Dallas Dwight. And I'm Drizzle Silvera. And we're on episode, what, number 35 now or something like uh, that? 30 something. Water cut. Nice. This episode is officially brought to you by Fiji because we're better than you. <laughs> it's a good slogan. Yeah, Fiji, we're better than you. You can't afford us. <laughs> Fiji water is good, though. I love it. It's something about it. It's like softer or smoother or something. I just enjoy it. But that's not why we're here, folks. No, it's not. Contrary to popular belief, this is not a water rating podcast. Unless it's Liquid Death. Unless it's Liquid Death, which is the best water of all time. And we drink Liquid Death because... We're endorsed by Liquid Death. And we're better than you. (laughs) The timing of that worked out great. We improvised all that, folks. Wow. Uh, So we got lots to talk about today. We've had a very busy couple of weeks. We haven't been able to record a podcast. We've been so busy. So the ones that have been coming out, we recorded a couple weeks ago. So we're just sitting down here for the first time in a little bit. Feels good to be back in the studs. Yeah, the AC's working. and uh, It's also cooling off outside, which is nice. Oh, yeah. No, finally, dude. We've had some really nice days. So right at the top of the show, wanted to get some housekeeping and, and chores out of the way for you guys. Uh, this weekend, the day this comes out, we are going to be in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina at the Tin Roof. That's going to be a blast. Uh, and then tomorrow, again. Yep, we're going to be in Columbia, South Carolina at the Tin Roof. Also at the Tin Roof. Yeah. I don't know how they move it from one to the other, but we're going to find out and we'll let you know. Uh, super excited. I grew up in Columbia, so I've been to that Tin Roof many times. And it's a college hangout place, and I went to college in Columbia. So I've been there many times, and it's just uh, it's a really cool, it's a really cool place. So. I think, I've pl- I think I've played there with a band or two, like subbing or something. Gotcha. Nice. Never my own band, though. So, But I know friends' bands that are like essentially the house band there. They're like there every week or every other yeah, week. Regulars. So yeah, regulars. It's been there for like 10 years. Yeah, it's crazy. But uh, we'll be doing that. What else do we have coming up? Tickets for the Whiskey A Go Go show. If you are in L.A. or the surrounding areas, or hell, if you're in anywhere in the world and you want to fly to L.A. to see us play at the Whiskey A Go Go, a legendary venue, Tickets are on sale right now. They're $20. We have worked out a deal with the whiskey where they gave us a certain amount of pre-sale tickets, so we actually have the tickets. So if you want to buy them, please come to us directly. There's only a few left. There's only a few left. We, we were only given a small amount of them, and we've already sold most of them. So if you want them, please let us know. You have to let us know. If you go to the whiskey and buy them, that's fine. That's cool. Uh, it just doesn't benefit us directly as a band. It benefits the whiskey, which, of course, helped the whiskey out. Amazing venue. Glad it survived COVID. Yeah, same to all venues, rock, especially not like iconic rock not venues, all of them dude. Did. Yeah, yeah, so that's good. Uh, beyond that, head over to lamaybe.com slash UK tour. Get your tickets for our UK tour. Those are moving quickly as well. And if you're a support band or know someone, nah, support band is the wrong word. If you're a band in the UK or if you have friends that are in a band in the UK, please comment on our Facebook page, uh, send us a message, let us know. We're looking for support acts to help us uh, fill out some of these dates. Stock these lineups nice and thick. And uh, yeah, so let us know. So, how awesome would it be if we actually get, you know, an opening act for us and that band happens to be the one that we saw that first night we stayed there? That would be crazy. That recognized yeah, us. Yeah, we should tell that story. Yeah. Because I don't, I mean, we may have, but it's been 20 episodes. Yeah, it's been so, a long, long time uh, ago. We arrive in the UK and we stay in Chester, I guess. And the first day, we have not played any shows yet. We're going to the first venue, which is in Chester, UK. It's in uh, a place called the Live Rooms. Yeah, the Live Rooms, yeah. And we stop at a services, which is uh, for the U.S. folks that maybe haven't been over there. That's their version of like a rest stop. But they're a lot cooler over there. And they're not like over here. (laughs) Over here, rest stops kind of suck. Over there, it's like a whole thing. They're really cool. Yeah, over here, you'd rather not stop at a rest stop. You'd rather stop where there's a bunch of gas stations off the highway. And this is what that is over there. They have gas stations, hotels, food, convenience all sorts of stuff, all in one little area. It's like, why don't we do that? And Chicken Tika. It makes the most sense. Like, I don't know why. Like, why? Anyway, uh, we just love burning gas over here, I guess. So we're in the services wandering around looking for whatever snacks or something, and we see another group of people that are also in all black jeans and long hair, and we clearly tell they're a band. And we kind of eye each other, and we're like, you're a band. They assume they eyed us, and we're like, there must be a band. 
wanted to go say hey. By the time I was like, oh, I should probably go say hey, they had already left, so we missed them. But uh, we later found out. Do you remember how we found out? Yeah, so they had talked to our driver, Scott. Yeah, Captain and, Fury. Yes, yes. And uh, so anyways, um, we found out that they knew exactly who we were. They yeah, they talked us. to him. Yeah. yeah. And they had um, actually submitted to be on our tour. <laughs> we had no idea. I thought, because I saw they were looking at us, and I thought they were saying, like, you know, the same thing that I was doing to them. Like, oh, that's a band. I don't know what band. I don't know your names, but that's clearly a rock band. That's cool. Like, brother, you know? Exactly. And they were looking back at us the same way. Little did I know they're looking at us like, that's the LA maybe. <laughs> actually recognizing us, which was kind of cool. But yeah, we uh, couldn't really get their name. We tried hard to track those guys down. Yeah, yeah, we did. And uh, we heard someone say it or something, and then it was something Well, because conveniently, there was there was a place where we, we actually could have had an extra opener. And it was that night. It was that, that night, place. exactly. And so we were like scrambling, we were like, trying to we figure like, out who, who like, they yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. they totally could have come, and it would have been so fun. Yeah. Um, but we had the Far North and a couple other guys come and help, and it was, it was really cool. Uh, but anyway, yes, we say all that to say if, if you know people in a band, uh, if you're in a band yourself, please comment. I put a post up on Facebook. Comment on that post or just message us directly. Yeah. Text us if you have our numbers. <laughs> Who cares? Email us. Also, LA if you Navy. have any, like, videos of y'all y'all playing, live playing, or or any any sure. songs out, you know, would be cool to hear, yeah, too. Yeah, We'll check them out as well. You could just uh, email, um, just email podcast at lamaybe.com. Sound good? Or Dallas sounds, or sounds Drizzle good. Yeah. at lamaybe.com. Whatever you want. And, uh, yeah, we'll make it happen. It ultimately, I don't think it's up to us, but our agency will pick. <laughs> but we'll send them your info. <laughs> yeah, we, we are more than willing to submit, you know, names to our agencies and Absolutely. stuff like that. So. And we were asked to ask you. So we're soliciting. So hit us up. Anyway, yeah, Whiskey Go Go tickets, UK tickets. Again, that's lamaybe.com slash UK tour. That'll take you to gigantic.com where you can get all the tickets. They are um, very reasonably priced. We're playing smaller to medium-sized venues, so we're hoping you guys come out in force. We can maybe uh, get some get some masses and some seats here for the UK. Pack that shit out, I think is what you're trying to say. Yeah, we were blown yeah. away last time. Oh, yeah, for sure. And so we're hoping to be even more blown away this time. We'll see. I, I see a lot of buzz about it um, on the on the chat rooms, so on the on the AOL boards, the AIM boards. Yeah, I think this time, I think last time was amazing. I think this time is going to be spectacularly amazing. Yeah. What if we get there and it's, <laughs> it's so bad? <laughs> That's not going to happen. Anyway. Yeah, it's not going to happen. It's going to be amazing. So it's time for some gig recap. We Let's, had, do we had Let's do gigs, it. Let's do it. Gigs, man. I wish we had a drop to play right here. <laughs> gig recap. See? Like that. There we go. We did our own drop. It's time. Uh, where do you want to start? Uh, so I think we already talked about the ones prior to Oklahoma. Why don't we pick up with the drive to Oklahoma on okay. the way to All right. our gigs? All right. Uh, it was a long drive. It right. was a very long drive. Next. <laughs> AIS was like, I can forget. We, can we put it in perspective? AIS though? is ass and seat, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we left at what? Uh, 10 a.m. or something? 10 a.m.? 9 or 10 a.m.? Something like 10 a.m. And we arrived at our hotel, I think, at 1 a.m.? 2 a.m.? Yeah, it was it was wild. And our hotel was not... It was still two hours away from where we needed to go. <laughs> Let's put this in perspective for uh, our overseas listeners because a lot of overseas people who have... Or people not from America... I, I noticed two things with our travels. People who have never visited America, they know it's big, but I think they underestimate exactly how big. And people from America, on the flip side, just completely take for granted how big our country is. We, yeah, we know. Definitely. Like, oh, it takes me, you know, six hours to get to my grandma's. Got to go house. to New York. Got to yeah. drive drive twelve hours. You yeah, know, we're just like whatever, no worries. But we don't we don't fathom that like if you drive twelve hours in Europe, you've crossed a lot of Europe. Like you've gone through seven countries or whatever. You know, yeah, depending on where you are. So we drove. This is America. We drove from our home, Charlotte, all the way to about halfway, a little less than halfway, a little actually. less than halfway. Yep. Oklahoma, and that was the GPS said 15, 16 hours. Of course, in practice, that takes um, about 20. Yeah, yeah, 18 to 20, depending on stops. And we're in our big van and trailer, so we're not doing 80 down the interstate. You know? Yeah, and there were plenty of areas where you could do 75 miles per hour. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, that was the posted speed limit. <laughs> and we're just chugging along at 68, 70. 60, yeah, I just 70 at the most. <laughs> yeah. Once you hit like 75 in that like motherfucker, you feel fast, that trailer yeah. start to go, ooh. I don't, like, like, yeah. no. I don't like riding that rig. 
No. Over se- much over 70, maybe 73 or so, but not much. You know? What's crazy is if you see 73, what looks to be about 73 on the speedometer, though, mm-hmm. and then you actually look at the GPS mm-hmm. speed, it, you're going, like, right at 70. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Trailer, you think? No, I just don't back. think it's, you know... Not fully calibrated. Fully accurate, calibrated, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, man, that was a long drive. But we went through a bunch of states. We went oh, through, and uh, we've got to talk about a highlight because I always ask okay. on our podcast to our guests, You're wearing what's it. the best gas station you've ever been to? And they say, without fail, every time, Bucky's. And specifically, one guest we had on. Uh, yeah, Matt James. From Matt Black James, Black yeah, exactly. And... Uh, yeah, we, we always ask, gas station, because it's such a part of road life. Mm-hmm. Yep. Our services, right? And, uh, yeah, so we stopped at Bucky's. We got bucked. Dude, I got bucked hard. We got so bucked. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> we, show we, the hat. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll show the hat. Here we go. He got a Bucky's hat, I got yo. a Bucky's hat. Oh, I said, I y'all, like, I hate that. So there we go. There See, we it's go. got the beaver on it. Hold it closer to your eye lines, cause, so it's in focus. There we go. Here we go. There's an there eye you line. There go. Eh. I could just do this right here. Here we go. Boom. Bucky. You got bucked. You got bucked like a motherfucker. <laughs> I got bucked like a motherfucker. <laughs> so anyways, uh, yeah, we got, we went to Bucky's and I don't know. Incredible. How many, how many pumps do you think? Were there like a hundred? Dude, it was so many. It was, like <laughs> <laughs> it was insane. The Wait. thing the thing was on the, the land plot of like a Walmart. Like this thing was massive. And we walked in and first of all, I was overwhelmed by the smell of those like honey roasted uh, almonds or whatever. Yeah, right. And it just like filled. It smelled like Christmas. But you, me and Ashton walked in together and we just stopped. Like we were, it was like a movie. We were just like. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, holy <laughs> fuck. There's we a stopped home at a good to- time too because it was like, it wasn't too late. It yeah. was maybe what, six, seven o'clock at night. It wasn't like uh, yeah, the sun was, was still out. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't like three in the morning or something, which it was the second time we stopped. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was so awesome because we uh, we were so overwhelmed though. Yeah, I was like, before we even get in, I'm like, there's deer stands, yeah. there's fire pits outside. Yeah, the building is massive, and I'm like, it oh is shit, like a, like a Walmart. Yeah. yeah, yeah, except better, much better. Right? Yeah, so we um. I think it's better. I mean, you and you and it, we all kind of split up and just. I was needing a hat. We just badly. wandered around, like I wanted to see everything they had. Same. Uh, and they had everything. We we literally go in. There's jewelry. There's a jewelry area. There's kids' toy area. Keep in mind, this is a gas station. Yes, yes. This <laughs> is a, this is a gas station. Uh, there's clothing. There's beach stuff. Like flip flops, Hawaiian shirts, cowboy hats, leather belts with. Massive ass belt buckles. Yeah, yeah. Made in the USA. Where did, where were we when we it was Arkansas, right? No, this was in uh, Alabama. Really? Yeah, we were okay. close. We were close to. Um, that makes sense. Uh, Auburn. Yes, you're right. Yeah, because there was a bunch of Auburn stuff in there. Auburn uh, is is the the Auburn Tigers is a college. So, but the but the best part. So, do you remember what section we were in when I said I think I died and went to heaven? Uh, yes, it was the section with like targets and gun stuff and red dot sights. Yeah, yeah. and I was like, "Duh, <laughs> this is the best gas station in the world." You are. An it already one. was yeah. the best before I even saw that section, and then it. Furthermore, like for a gas station to surpass Bucky's, they'd have to have no, an no entire, chance. like, like gun counter selling guns yeah. and like an armory they'd have to have an armory yeah. to surpass like, come check out our tanks in the back just like <laughs> <laughs> i'm just like just die i hemorrhage <laughs> I have to drag you out back there don't say tanks Driz is gonna die <laughs> we need him for the gig <laughs> if, you, if you see tanks and trains in the same sentence he's surely a goner he's gone it's over there's just literally upside down floating. Like, what is the <laughs> physics of this? Like exorcism <laughs> shit. <laughs> You're like walking sideways up a building. <laughs> ah, shit. You said trains, didn't you? You got them all worked up. Oh, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so the last gig we were at. So we'll go back. We'll, we're going to jump forward. But the uh, you know not the we, last you know gig. We do. But the second to last gig. So we were in Mabane. Mebane. Mebane. That's the local. Although say. someone from there just told me it's Mabane. So now I don't know what to think. I'm just going to call it Mabane because it's... Mabane sounds yeah, so, much so much better. So much Don't better. Don't say Mebane. By so, the way, it's spelled. Let's spell it. M-E-B-A-N-E. Me, Bane. Right? Mabane. Mabane. Nope. Yeah, we were right? told it was Mebane. I was like, well, I'm not saying that. I'm saying no, Mabane. Yeah, so. same. 
So anyways, we're about to start setting up, and what do I hear? Ding, ding, ding. And I'm like, fuck. And I run, and it's on this old town. We should town. say Driz loves trains. Yes, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like. Well, no, Driz loves all forms of transportation. Yeah. Cars probably being your least favorite. Cars definitely being my <laughs> least favorite. <laughs> Every other one, Driz is like, boats, fucking. <laughs> boats, ships, planes, yeah. jets. Yep. Tanks. I like how you said the same thing two times. Boats, yeah. ships, planes, jets, aeroplanes. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, yeah. Fighter jets, transportation jets, C 130s, <laughs> <Just, laughs> 747s. Just say planes. <laughs> Airbus A 380s. <laughs> That's the one, dude. Yeah. The most expensive private jet in the world is an Airbus A 380. I'd believe it, dude. It's and it's probably Palace. from the Emirates. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so an Airbus A 380, look it up. They made it a private jet. <laughs> it's not a public jet, it's a private jet. This thing's the size of a Walmart. <laughs> it's got to be a billion dollar aircraft. I think it's 500 million, yeah. Okay, yeah, still. Only, yeah. Half a billion Should dollars. I dropped that walking in here today. Yeah, so anyways, uh, going back to uh, Bucky's, I guess <laughs> to complete it, we got some of their food. By the way, the they, they they prepare the barbecue right in front of you Dude, and the this brisket. Guy, this guy is standing in the middle of Bucky's with a big old slab of beef just just slicing it up, and it's looking so good, man. It was so we juicy. Were pretty hungry. I, like, I saw um, you eating that sandwich in the car. You were <laughs> What did you eat? Oh, we were, sl- we were slurping. We were slurping. <laughs> Dude, I got a... I that got was a- one of our inside jokes on the trip. We were slurping Sammy's. <laughs> yeah, slurping Sammy's. I, I think Ashton said that first, or you said that first. Who said that? I don't know. I was the, f- I was the one who, after it was said, went... <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's when everyone started... <laughs> <laughs> we were just slurping Sammy's. Dude, Let doing some more... Sammy blend it up so I can <laughs> slurp it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me slurp that. Let shit. me slurp that, Sam. You got steak? I'll slurp it. Mac and cheese? Put it in with the steak. I'll slurp it. Put a couple uh, spinach leaves in there too, for health. You take your dentures out and you just start slurping. <laughs> <laughs> Put my attach my tube to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. Anyways, uh, no, I think I got the uh, the steak fajita burrito. Yes, and I got the little taco version of that, and it was really good. Yeah. Well, and the brisket it was, sandwich, it was a sliced brisket, and that's the best. If you see sliced brisket, and you're like, you got to get it. You got to get Yeah. I yeah. saw it, and I didn't, and, but I and, wasn't disappointed. We I, had out of the so van, much, so. I had so much steak in my fajita burrito. Oh, that's awesome. It was like. You know what I was disappointed with, though, was the jerky. They had that whole jerky wall, which everyone who's brought up Bucky said they have that whole jerky wall, and they did, and it was cool, and they had all this jerky. And I got the one that I like, the teriyaki of the Bucky's brand jerky, and it was all right. It was fine. It's because you got teriyaki. Everyone knows Peppard's the best. Nah, I always like teriyaki. Uh, that's wrong. Yeah, probably. It was wrong in this case. They had a lot of other cool flavors, but I wanted to try the one that I knew I liked so I could yeah. compare. And then I should have been more adventurous. But we'll be. I mean, I'll eat, I'll eat teriyaki jerky, but it's by no means like I, I will always. I like the Jack Link's teriyaki. It's really with like the beef strips on where it's like softer. It's not just like. You're not just, like, tearing it like leather. No, I like the leather. I like to just yeah. chew on it. I mean, that's fine, too, but... Reminds me of, like, essentially pemmican. just doing a salt lick at that point. <laughs> like, yep. so, I mean, oh, shit, I'll do that, too, man. But show me a salt, show me a people, salt rack. Because I didn't know rock. it was spelled that way until we rolled up there. It's B-U-C hyphen E-E. Apostrophe S. But we'll, we we'll double Bucky check this. I'm going to check right? this hat. We assume Bucky is the Bucky's, beaver. Yeah, that's definitely a beaver because those beaver pucks, man. Man, that beaver got bucked. Is it even spelled in here? Yeah, there it is. B U C dash E E apostrophe S. You want to hold it up to the GoPro? The GoPro. Do I want to hold it up. It's kind of hard to read. Hold it up to the GoPro. All right, here we go. GoPro. Get it in there. There we go. That was pointless. That's why I got a hat on today too. That was utterly pointless. But Bucky's was cool, so we had a good time. Uh, we haven't even gotten to the venue yet. First night, we played Mid America Outdoors in Jay, Oklahoma. Another amazingly cool place. This place, my was kind really of cool. place. Everywhere we played in Oklahoma was crazy cool and unique. Like we've never played anywhere even close to those two places. I could move to Oklahoma. It was and cool. Be happy. It was cool. Yeah, yeah, it was a really cool place. Um, <clears throat> laid back and stuff too. Uh, but like yeah, when man. I'm not in on the road. I moved to Oklahoma, and you just come to visit me, and I'm on a farm with my hand, like, elbows deep in a bull's ass, like, trying to, you know, do Not even doing anything, just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? 
What are you doing there? Is he sick? No. <laughs> it's perfectly <laughs> fine. <laughs> it's just warm. I don't know. <laughs> this bull's like. <laughs> just kill me for beef already. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> life sucks. <laughs> we definitely passed more than a fair share of longhorns, dude. Yeah, I mean, these, yeah. these bulls had horns like woo, six, seven feet across, tip to tip, easy. Yeah, you definitely don't want to, you know, take one of those. You definitely don't want to mess with the bull. You might get the horns. Oh no, these are big. Be horns. a real horny time. <laughs> You don't want to get that horny, I promise. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Mid America Outdoors. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was good. Next. No, I'm just kidding. No. Uh, this place was nuts, man. So it was like a side by side convention. I don't know how else to, to call those things. There's got to be a better word. Side by side is so lame. Basically, it's those, uh, it's like a golf cart on steroids, right? Yeah. I forget what the actual name of those okay, cars are. Now, you, now like you're a, visualizing, hopefully, you're, you're visual, you, the listener, are visualizing what I'm talking about. It's the golf cart on steroids, right? The hunting version of the golf cart. Right, there, I've always heard them called side by sides. Yeah, those, but they, were all, they now, also have the dune buggies, too. These were on steroids. These things were like the craziest side by sides you've ever seen. Yeah. These things had to be pushing $60,000, $70,000, $100,000, a lot of them. Oh, dude, it was insane. They had yeah. vendors there. It was also a mobile home park where you, or trailer park. I guess you come Trailer in and bring your... Word. It's like an RV park. RV park, yeah. RV park, but they had cabins on site, too. They had massive pool. They had screens, like, displaying... The pool had a lazy river, They had dude. screens, random Jumbotron screens displaying, like, all their vendors, like, stuff, you know, from Can-Am to Honda to all yep. these high-performance outdoor vehicles, yep. uh, with as well as displaying their tracks that they had on site. I mean, I don't know how many... This place must have been hundreds of acres. It was um, huge. It was massive. It was very big. And then we didn't even get into like the courses and paths they had carved out for you to take your side by side and go driving all crazy and nuts and stuff. They also had a rodeo there, which yep. we didn't see because oh, nice. it was so massive. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we didn't see it. Uh I've only been to one rodeo. It was with Ashton. We were in like fourth grade or something. <laughs> that's pretty crazy. Um, that's pretty nuts. But yeah, Mid America Outdoors. You guys owe, owe this place a Google. And if you're ever in the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma, this place is the place to be. It definitely is. A yeah. bunch of rich boys with their big RVs and crazy expensive. Woo. Yeah. You and know, then, uh, we had the whole upstairs of the clubhouse to ourselves for our, our green room, which was really cool. We had a pool table and we, we posted on the um, on our Instagram. Go check it out. A couple episodes back, you'll see Goliath shooting pool. That was taken in that spot. Yeah. Dart and, boards. Um, dart boards. No darts, though. No darts. Yeah. <laughs> so we had a lot of fun. The AC up there was blasting. It was, oh, it, it was, was a yeah. hot day. Yeah, it was hot. All of us were cold. <laughs> How does that work? If you say you're cold, that means the AC's blasting. I wasn't quite cold. <laughs> but I, I wasn't making fun of you guys for saying you were, because I got it. Yeah, no, it was cool. They had a uh, you know an array there, small array, big you know high platform stage. Used to be what there used to be a. Um, a swim up bar there, but they've been oh. kind of like reconfiguring the pool and stuff. Yeah, the pool was um, massive. Had so a lazy river. We wanted to go in it, but we didn't get a chance to. Yeah, but uh, they were they were doing all these like cool. They were doing flip cup tournaments, beer pong. Yeah, tournaments. Yeah, they had a whole beer tournament thing. Uh, yeah, it was crazy while we were playing and stuff. So yeah, and then we played uh, some music. Some there were DJs times. there before we were playing. There was yep. DJ afterwards at a stiff, slightly different location behind us. Yep, it was a whole thing. Uh, the restaurant was up there. They had good food, all kinds of cool stuff. Great food. The burger was super good. Yeah. Um, I think Rasan got the tuna. I want I should have gotten the tuna, but the burger was super good. I got a chicken salad, and the chicken, just regular, you know, char like char grilled chicken, was amazing. Ter oh, amazing. Gotcha. Yeah, so good. Nice. Uh, then we finish. This is the best part. We finish in Mid America Outdoors. We pile back in the van and we drive to the next. No, event. what do we do before that though? We played with a band afterwards. Oh yeah! Right? Yeah. Oh shit! Give me a second. They were awesome, and I can't. I, I'm reverse reaction. Reverse, reverse reaction. reaction. Yeah, I was about to say cowgirl or something like that. <laughs> but yeah, reverse reaction. Reverse reaction. These guys were great. Yeah. So what? I and I thought this before. What happened happened, and we'll tell you in a second. We uh, finished playing. We're like, you know, here's, here's what I was going to say is the best part. The, the next venue that we had to go to was 40 minutes away. That is unheard of. Usually it's right? minimum. Right? Like, you see two, three hours, you're like, oh, nice. That's great. <laughs> Anything less than two hours is like, hell yeah. It was 40 minutes. 
So we were so stoked. So we were like, you know, we finished playing. We, we, it's only 40 minutes away. We can chill for a minute. The owner was asking us, the owner of the place was asking us to come up and hang out and, and check out the other band, too. And uh, Jason, right? Yeah, Jason. Really yeah. cool guy. Really cool. And took great care of us. And so we went up to their bar. It was called um, Coconuts. It was like a tiny little area with like a dance floor and a little bar and the stage and nice system and everything up there as well. They had the same system we had or pretty close to it, one of those EVs. Yeah, they had 12s. We have 15s, though. Okay, so. yeah. And then uh, all the tiki stuff and the coconuts-related theme stuff is really cool. It's a fun atmosphere. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, this band starts playing, and they've been, they're playing when we show up. And right off the bat, I was like, these guys are good. Like, they're playing. They have a good set list, and they're, yeah. playing, they're playing well. I can sing. They're just kind of rocking out, having a good time. And then at some point, they point to us and go, hey, this is the LA Maybe. These guys just killed it over there or whatever. And they play a couple of other songs. And then, hey, look, there's a bass player for the LA Maybe. They're just kind of like referencing us a couple of times. Yeah. And I don't know exactly how it started, but somebody from the band goes, you guys want to come play some songs? Yeah, we need a break. Can we play some songs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we were like, nah, you do the bashful, nah, whatever. No, come on. Okay. Yeah. I give them one. <laughs> I'll do one, nah. And then I'll go. <laughs> so we ended up doing two songs. We did two songs. What do we play? Um, just like Paradise, just like I feel Paradise like, and Man, and, Man in the Box. And Man in the Box, yeah. Yeah. And uh, that was super fun. Some guy came up to me after, and he just throws his arm around me. Everyone up there was crazy drunk. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, they, <laughs> they got down. He throws his arm around me, and I'm just sitting here like, oh, okay. I was the only one not drinking a drop because I was driving us. And... uh he puts his arm around me, and he's like, man, it don't seem to matter what guitar you play. Because I was playing this guy's, like, Strat or whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, right, right. I was like, thanks, man. That was really fun. They had those special cups, too, that threw me for a loop. I was like, oh, yeah. I ordered a, I ordered a, a Milk Ultra. Uh-huh. You really like beer, you know, because I'm a pussy and shit. Yeah. But anyways, no, I got a Milk Ultra, and I see him just put it down. And then I, I kind of look away, and I look back over, and it's full. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, you were really thrown for a like, loop here. The you were fuck like, is going trying, on? you were like, really like, trying to figure this out. Because I asked for it on draft. I'm like, how, how did this happen? So I see this like little like black thing at the bottom of the cup, and I hold it up like this, and I poke it, and beer just, <laughs> just gushes all over gushes your arm. Gushes all yeah. over me, dude. I watched that happen. That was fun. <laughs> I was sitting this far away. I think I got a little backsplash, too. Yeah, dude. So we found out it was magnets. It's, yeah, it's magnetic. Yeah. Here, by the way, pro-life tip for you. If you ever see something you can't explain, magnets. I don't know how. Just always is. Yeah. Any magic trick, magnets. So is that how you got as good at <laughs> playing guitar as you are? Yeah, magnets. Magnets. Okay. Yeah, pickups, right? <laughs> it still kind of works. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> technically, on paper. I don't understand how an electric guitar works, but magnets. <laughs> and that's not inaccurate. But you also need copper wire. Okay. But also magnets, though. But magnets, though. But magnets, though. Yeah. So magnets we, create the force field, you know. Yep. Then we headed to uh, our next area, which we went to Ketchum, Oklahoma. So there's this big lake in Oklahoma. Honestly, didn't get the name of the lake. The should've, Grand Lake, I think. Should have probably got that I think name. it was Grand Lake. So we're on the south side of it at J, and we go around, and then we're on the north side of it, and that was Ketchum. So that was the 40-minute drive. And we get there, and Jeff from or the guy who puts on Redneck Raft Out, which was the festival we played, met us there and took us to our cabin. And we're staying in this nice little cabin with another band, and um, just had a just had a cool time, man. We just got to the cabin at like three, four a.m. Yep, all crashed. And then um, what happened then? Oh yeah, I remember as we were walking in, we looked up at the sky, and because there's no lights out there, yeah, no city lights, nothing, and you're just in the middle of nowhere. We looked up, it was just. Billions so of stars. Many stars. Yeah, it was like, awesome. It was crazy. One of those things where you looked up and you're just like, oh my God, you just got to stop and stare. I forgot for a those were up there. Yeah, I can yeah. never see these. That's crazy. Um, So we stayed in that nice little cabin. Yeah, it was it was pretty cool. A lot of space to come. Right. I slept in the out. van. Yeah, the first night or both nights? The first night I slept in the Second night you were next to me in that other one. Yeah, I was on the top bunk. Yeah. Yeah. Caddy. Which caddy I was kind of sketched out about those top bunks. They were pretty they, solid. They, well, they didn't have like guardrails. Like, oh. So one time when I was a kid. And they're high up. I was at some sort of Boy Scout camp. My dad was with me. And we were staying in bunk beds. And there was like a bunch of people in one room all in bunk beds. And my dad was on the bottom and I was on the top because I was probably seven, eight. <laughs> and in the middle of the night, <laughs> my dad just hears, boom. 
<laughs> looks over. I'm just on the ground. I had fully rolled off of this bunk and slammed onto the ground. <laughs> Didn't wake up. <laughs> Didn't wake up at all. Fucking amazing. So my dad picks me up. He's like, we're going to go get a hotel. Oh, <laughs> and we went and got a hotel. <laughs> and uh, I have no memory of that. So <laughs> that's either really good or bad. I don't know. <laughs> that's amazing, dude. Woke up amazing at guitar. Uh <laughs> Fluent in Mandarin. That's your story. That's your story. It's like, I mean, I, honestly, I sucked at guitar until I yeah, fell I just off couldn't get it. No, I didn't even start playing until till many years later. But uh, I always think that's a pretty funny story. Again, no memory of it. That's just what my dad told me. He said it scared him to death. And I was just like, what? I bet it scared him to death. Woke up on the floor like, what's wrong? <laughs> I'm good. Dude. It's <laughs> so crazy, dude. My, my daughter broke her arm just falling off the bottom bunk. She just fell weird and like tried yeah. to stop herself and... Oh, you can't broke, kind of, broke both. I guess the bones. their bones probably aren't too strong at that age either. Yeah, I mean they're rubber. Just kind of, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that that was that was. Did that you sucked. see Tom Segura's accident a while ago? Oh, dude, yeah, dude. <laughs> Fucking dude, goes to. He just goes to dunk. Yep. This is so crazy that you can do this as a human. He just jumps up, slips, and breaks his entire body. <laughs> <laughs> like, Literally, That's so yeah, nuts that literally. you could do that. Like you would not think that you could just jump and land on the ground, and you'd think like, oh, "I'll be fine." His arm got like twisted behind him and was like literally backwards, and like his his whole knee was messed up, and it was, it was it's pretty gruesome. If you want to see the video, it's out there. But because <laughs> they were filming something when he did it, and uh, yeah, at least they got it on camera though. <laughs> yeah, they make a lot of fun of it. Yeah, um, one of my other favorite comedians made the NBA logo. You know how it's like the guy laying up. He just made it with Tom Segura all jacked up. <laughs> It's so funny, dude. Oh, man, that's amazing. <laughs> it says, like, uh, maybe it was the Air Jordan where he's doing the, the split with the dunk. Yeah, that's such a cool shot. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we got to the cabin. The cabin was cool. Next day, we go over to the festival, which the, the green room area, we, we find out, is Jeff's house, which is a big, nice house on the lake. And uh, he's got everything taken care of. There's food, drink, the air conditioning and fans of that house were incredible because it was a pretty hot yes, day. Yes, they were. They were. And uh, you kind of go out on the back patio. It's got this whole patio area that overlooks the lake and then you kind of make your way down. I, I grew up at a lake house so I'm familiar with like the long walk down to the lake and the steps and the docks and the shakiness and all that stuff. It was all there again so it felt like home in a way. But uh, get down to the dock and he's got a big floating stage and all kinds of stuff set up out there and there's um, full liner APA system and like everything was, was taken care of. It was really cool. So Lucky for us, we had Saturday completely off. Yeah, we just so got we to just, hang out with the bands chilled. on that day. Yeah. yeah, we just hung out with the bands, watched them all play, talked to them, stayed there pretty late. Or no, not so late. We got, we were asleep by like 10, like 9 that night, something like that. Yeah. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We 8 o'clock, we were like, eh, let's go back to the cabin. <laughs> well, because we had to play the next day. Everyone else you know, was like, so we're going to the bar. Are you coming? We're like, ah, nope. <laughs> nah, we're going to go to sleep, man. Yeah, I was asleep by like 9.30 or 10. Yeah. I I'd f I finally fell asleep just right right before midnight, dude. If you get a chance on the road to catch a few extra Z's, you take that chance. But we woke up at like eight thirty or nine. Yep, we had a sound check. So at, at, I mean, I still got a full like you know eight eight plus yep. hours of sleep that yep. night. Yep, we had a sound early morning sound check mm -hmm. and an early slot. We played at noon. Yeah, but it was fun. Um, yeah, we brought it. We went really hard. Yeah, and um. So I got I to gotta make a couple mentions finger, from the Saturday. My finger still hasn't healed. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. Yeah, you always tear off your nail. I always... It's this, part right, up some, it's this part yeah. right here where the nail attaches to the skin that the way I pick gets abused pretty bad. And if I play real hard, like Spain or... You should just keep one. keep a bottle of super glue. Like, if you really fuck it up and it's, like, hard to play, super it's glue is fine. It just gets kind of blistery and bloody. It's not it's actually super painful. If I've, had, I've probably honestly killed that part of my finger and I can't feel it anymore, so... Nice, nice. Yep. Yeah, uh, so a couple bands, big big takeaways for me on the uh, day one. I, I really liked uh, Lalani Kilgore yeah. and her, her, her group of folks. Mm -hmm. They were so cool to hang yeah, out with, Yeah, we hung out too. with them the most, for sure. Um, and then uh, day one, we, uh, we also got to spend some time uh, with Stone, Stone Senate. Senate. Yeah, those guys were great And the, well. they were they were awesome. They've been at this for a long time, too. They're singer's tallest human I've ever seen in my life. Oh, dude, yeah, he's he so tall. He had been, like, 6'9". Yeah. <laughs> But they were they were just like you know so nice yeah and they're six you know a successful band you know yeah. they they do this full time yeah so yeah they um, were awesome man they did a, a bunch of really cool covers um, including a Grateful Dead song and I never liked the Grateful Dead but they did it and it, and it was awesome I still don't really like yeah. it but I watched this song and I was like 
I like that song. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> and then I went back to my one of my students who's always asking to learn Grateful Dead songs. And he's the only reason I know any Grateful Dead songs is this student. He's one of my favorite students. And um, I was like, do you know this one? He was like, yeah, yeah, we worked with that one. He started playing it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's it. I just didn't know the name. I didn't like matching it up now. That's awesome. So it was cool. Cool to see that come full circle. But yeah, the song was um, Franklin's Tower. God, yeah, Roll that's right. That's away. right. Ledoux. <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> something like that. It was that, super yeah. catchy. And um, yeah, they just, they, they killed it. They, they it was loud though, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, 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 I think we were the only band there that didn't use amps. Yeah. <clears throat> Hell yeah. And it's called being a pioneer. <laughs> yeah, right? Well, and, and everyone sang, again, dude, y'all's tones were amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, but a lot, you know, a lot of, a lot of these guys have checked out, you know, the modeling, the quad cortex stuff, right. and they're just like, they're so set in like amps or nothing. And sure, they think dude, they sound great. I don't have you to know? haul your amps. That's fine. I, it's, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I remember our loadout and load in being the fastest. And the guys, oh, dude, we the, stage, the stage hands were like, this is amazing. They loved working with they us. They were yeah. like, holy shit. And, um, and what's nice is when you, when you get that like ease, of, ease and convenience and ease of work and all that. Mm -hmm. And then also there's no compromise in tone. No compromise. If, if it sounded yeah. bad, we wouldn't do it. If we thought amps sounded better, we would find a way to use amps. That's guaranteed. exactly hundred percent. But I think they sound about the same. <laughs> so it's like if they sound about the same, or even just one barely less than the other, which I don't even think is the case. I think they sound the same. Same. Then I think I'm gonna use. The easy I think one. they sound. I think they sound better live. And in here's why. Ways, yeah, in a lot of ways. You have you know a lot of times different mics from different companies. What They're, I love the mics vary on their placement of the speaker. Yep. You know you might have that piece of tape marking something but again you know you get a damaged yeah. microphone or some shit here's my thing with a live amp you get that added top end that you really hear the pick hit the strings and that just takes my head off and it's super displeasing at loud volumes and i hate that sound yeah especially and on, yeah. in the and the kemper and the axe effects and the heat and the helix and all these kind of roll that off a little bit Smooth not to mention it it's more like butter and less like not to mention know, did you did you notice how much stage noise there was in between songs with all those amps on yeah <laughs> yep <laughs> what was ours it was something like fucking zero yeah <laughs> <laughs> so we uh we played good i thought we played really well yeah it had a lot of fun crowd loved it um one of the comments we got on our thing was i thought the LA maybe had the best guitars, drums, vocal, like they listed everything of the day of the whole festival. I was like, well, oh, well, that's nice. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. And um Yeah, man, it was it was really great. And Jeff took such good care of us. Yeah, he was it was such a cool guy. Yeah. His wife, Amanda, amazing. And we got to we got to finally meet the rest of Oh God, I'm brain farting. This is not the time to brain fart on a podcast. <laughs> Magnolia by Oh yeah, Magnolia yeah. Bayou. Yeah. So we, we only hung out with two of them, uh, Cedric and Andrew. Yeah, that's Drew. their that's their lead uh, vocalist yep, so slash guitarist and drummer. Yep, yep. So which they cool. were really nice we guys. They, yeah, they were really nice guys. Yeah. It was really nice to finally meet the whole bunch and so hear we, them. So we saw Magnolia Bayou for the first time. We got to see him live. Um, them Dirty Roses was there. We got to hang out with them and have a good time again. Yeah, uh, it's it's been a little. That while was day since two. That we were all on the yeah. same day. Yep. Um, and then uh, Quiet Riot played last. Another band showed up called Framing the Red, and they played. Um, Oh, they had a good sound. I didn't get to see their set because it was, was really bad, like southern swampy rock too. Yeah. yeah, it was really cool. Really yeah, liked it. it was a swampy day. It was a swampy day. Yeah, yep. yeah that day it got hot. Choir and sounded great, dude. Yeah, they did. They did sound their great. singer, um, Jizzy Pearl, I think is his name. Kills. God, it. I fucking love that name. <laughs> Imagine having the balls to be like, you know what? Call me Jizzy. <laughs> Jizz for short. And to top it all, not off. ironically. <laughs> <laughs> End it with a pearl. Here's my necklace. funny story. Well, just call, okay, cut well, off the necklace and just call yeah, exactly. it pearl. Just call me cummy cum. <laughs> just call me cock cum Jones. <laughs> like, let's just be a little more obvious, why don't we? <laughs> oh, shit. Call me cummy McCum. Yeah, so um, 
No, it, it was it was a really special time. Spunk Jones and the Cum Boys. Spunk Jones and the Cum Boys. <laughs> oh God, we got some we got some new band names. We got a lot of new those. Band are, names. That's going to be for our VIPers. So you if mean? you haven't signed up to be a VIP or real a viper, quick, real quick, let's jump. Let's let's sidebar that. We'll asterisk that by saying this real quickly. We were driving home. You, me, and Goliath were the ones that were awake. Mm-hmm. We everyone was so tired that we cranked out like. 12 band names in less than like 10 minutes and we were just crying laughing just rolling and we'll yeah. read all those to you in, in just a few minutes as the yes. well, just a couple minutes really really just a couple but i wanted to go back and say the coolest thing that happened of the whole festival mm-hmm. was that <laughs> you and i decided that we were going to stage dive at the end of our set and this is a true stage dive true we, we were able to um because we're on a floating stage the subs and then water so we just dove off, dove off the subs at the end of our set into the lake. But full we did, stage close. We did front flips. Yeah, we did front flips. And we played bare. We played barefoot. We played barefoot. Yeah, because I'm not like, going to try to swim. Phone out. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. we planned this. In like, fact, we didn't even like wear we planned jewelry. This, like 46 hours before, like we were sitting yeah. there, like because Eternal Frequency was there, and we saw their bass player and guitarist do it. And to be honest, I'd already had the idea, but it was cool to see them do it. Only them and us were the only two that did it. Yep. Yep. So shout out Eternal Frequency. Those guys are great. Yeah, yeah, they were. They were awesome. And, and we got to meet them for the first time. Um, we have some of these bands are like brothers and sisters to us. And uh, Magnolia Bayou, you know, uh, Eternal Frequency. We're all part of the same, like, uh, agency and group and stuff. So it's really cool to kind of so meet I got, these people. So I got to say this, too. Um, Lalani Kilgore and her yep. band, mm-hmm. they were like, we're going to come back tomorrow to see you guys. Yeah. And they fucking did. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. They left the same time we did, too. Yeah, that's um, right. But yeah, we we loved those uh, just just some real badass chicks that were there, just kicking ass, and um, soloing, singing. Yeah, dude, yeah, it, it was dope. It was, it was awesome, and eternal frequency as well. So we uh, front flip off into the water, full stage clothes, swim our way over to the thing, get off. We're soaking wet, kind of towel dry a little bit, make our way up to the house. I change and get my uh, clothes, and I put them kind of hanging on the balcony and stuff, so they're drying in the sun. And I walk inside, and I open the door, and there's Rudy Sarzo <laughs> looking at me like all confused. And I'm like, oh, hey, I'm a big fan. And he's like, oh, thanks, man. And I was like, you can jump in after you're set? <laughs> and he's just, just like looking at me like, like I'm an alien. He's like, no. <laughs> and I was like, oh, cool, I did. <laughs> I just kind of walked around him like to go do what I was doing. And um, yeah, but Rudy Sarzo was a, a super kind guy. I've always heard he's really nice. And he was really kind and gentle and soft. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but rocked out like a motherfucker. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. But I just also felt like he was maybe a little confused at what I was like, <laughs> it's like how I was coming off to Who him. are you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it was really cool, man. Great. Uh, if you guys don't know who Rudy Sarzo is, you, you owe him a Google as well. I don't need to shout out his accolades here. They're too many. I read yeah, his book. His so. story's pretty cool. Yeah. I read his book a long time ago. Long time ago. I was probably 13, 14. So I followed Rudy and known who he is for a long time. So anyway, I think that'll about do it for the for the free version. Yeah. We've talked our Just about, dicks yeah. off. Uh, if you guys are watching this and you really like what you see and you want to see more and have access to early content as well, plus yep. a bonus episode at the end of the month, yep. please head on over to lamaybe.com forward slash VIP where you can, for $7 a month or $75 a year, become a VIP member and have access to all that. So Absolutely. And follow me on Twitter at SpunkyCum and the Jizz Monsters. Yep. <laughs> it's, uh, that's where I follow you at. <laughs> that's that's my new stage name. Spunky come the jizz monster. Spunky come the jizz monster. <laughs> yes, and it'll be me and Jizzy Pearl will start a new band. Yeah, so this is definitely. I'll be like pearly jizz. Age restriction. <laughs> I'll be pearly, pearly jizz. jizz. <laughs> It'll be Jizzy Pearl. I'll be pearly jizz. Ah oh, shit! Great voice though. Oh yeah, phenomenal voice. Not too crazy yeah. about the name though, but great voice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Again, yep. head on over to lamaybe.com forward slash VIP. Become yep. a member. Click like, comment, subscribe, and all that fun jazz. All that fun jizz. We'll see you there. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching the latest episode of your new favorite band. This is the end of the free content. But if you want to unlock the full uncut versions of every episode, head over to lamaybe.com slash VIP and sign up for our membership. For $7 a month, you'll get extended episodes of our podcast, a bonus episode every month, plus exclusive merch. You'll also be supporting us and helping us continue to stay on the road and make new music. And for that, we're eternally grateful. So thank you.